Well, today's going to be a fun day. We're going to learn derivative formulas. So that's formulas for what the derivative is, right? So derivative is slope. So let's take a look at the first rule that we're going to learn. Derivative of a constant function. If you graph that, it's just a horizontal line, and so the slope is zero. Therefore, the derivative, f prime of x, is zero. So that's our first rule. If you have any constant function, so f of x equals c for any number, c, then the derivative is zero, because the slope is zero. The next one we're going to learn is derivatives of a linear function. So remember, derivative is slope, so all we need to think of is what is the slope of y equals mx plus b. It's just m. So for the function f of x equals mx plus b, the derivative f prime of x is just m, the slope. So let's take a look at a few examples of this. If you have f of x is 7 minus 2x, that's linear, and the slope is negative 2, so f prime of x is negative 2. If f of x is equal to x, that's a linear function. It's just a line, and the slope is 1, so f prime of x is 1. next rule is called the power rule. It's the way to take the derivative of x to any power, so x to the n. How do you take derivative of this? Well, here's the rule. The derivative is n times x to the n minus 1. So what you do is you bring that exponent down in front, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's take a look at an example. Let's work with f of x is x squared. So that's x to some power, right? So we need to use the power rule. So take that 2 and bring it down in front and then subtract 1 from the exponent. There's your formula for the derivative. Now, x to the 1 is just x, so you can rewrite that as 2x. The next example is square root of x. How do you take derivative of this? Well, I didn't give you a rule for it. What you need to do first is rewrite it using a little bit of algebra. If you remember, square root of x is the same thing as x to the one-half power. If you don't remember that, just remember it now. So now how do you take derivative of that? Well, it's x to a power, so whatever that power is, it's going to come down out in front, and then you're going to subtract 1 from that exponent. So it's going to be one-half x to the negative one-half power. Now we're going to learn about what happens when you add functions together. So if you add two functions and you want to find their derivative, all you got to do is take the derivatives of each piece. Similarly, if you subtract the two functions. So this is a very easy rule and you'll use it all the time without even thinking about it. So let me give you an example. Let's take a look at this function. You've got a bunch of things added or subtracted together, right? So what we're going to do to take derivative, all we need to do is take derivatives of each piece, one at a time. So x to the 6, take that 6, bring it down in front, and subtract 1 from the exponent. Then minus whatever derivative of x to the 3rd is. So take that 3, bring it down in front, and turn the 3 into a 2. Now the derivative of 2x is just 2 because it's linear. And the derivative of 11 is 0 because it's a constant. So you don't need to write 0, you can just erase that. And there's your derivative. Now here's a more complicated example. f of x is square root of x cubed plus 1 over x minus 13 to the fifth power. I didn't give you rules yet for square roots and for 1 over x. What you need to do is rewrite this function. So square root of x cubed is x to the 3 halves power. 1 over x is x to the negative 1 power. 
and 13 to the fifth, you can just leave it 13 to the fifth. Now we have x to some powers, so we do know how to take derivatives. Bring that 3 halves down in front, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So it's 3 halves x to the 1 half power. Now, derivative of x to the negative 1, that negative 1 is going to come down in front and turn that into a minus. That plus is going to become a minus. And then subtract 1 from the exponent, so it's going to be x to the minus 2. Now for this next part, you might be thinking, take that 5 and bring it down in front. But 13 to the 5th is a constant. It's not x to the 5th power, it's 13 to the 5th power. You can type that into your calculator, you get some big number. It's just a constant, so its derivative is 0. But again, you don't have to write zero, you can just erase that, and there's your final answer. And finally, we're going to learn how to take derivative when there is a number in front of a function. All you have to do is just basically forget about that number and just multiply it by the derivative of the function. So let me give you an example. Let's take a look at 5x cubed. So you've got a number, 5, right, in front of the x cubed. So all you have to do is worry about how to take derivative of x cubed. Leave the 5 alone. So to take derivative of x cubed, that 3 is going to come down in front, and it's going to multiply by the 5. And so you get 15x squared. Now let's take a look at a much more complicated example. So you've got 10 cube root x minus 6 over x plus 7x squared minus 8. Again, whenever you see square roots, I never gave you a rule for this, so you need to rewrite it using some algebra. Cube root is the same as x to the 1 3rd power. 6 over x is the same as 6x to the negative 1 power. And then 7x squared minus 8 just stays the same. So when we go to take derivative, we're ready to go. We've rewritten everything so that we know how to use the power rule. So you take that one-third, bring it down in front, and you multiply the one-third by the ten, so you get ten-thirds, and then subtract one from the exponent. Now the next piece, minus six x to the negative one. So to take derivative, you're going to forget about the six. Six isn't going to play a role at all. You bring that negative one down in front, and so it's going to become a positive six and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, so it's x to the minus 2 now. Next, we've got 7x squared. How do you take derivative of that? Just bring the 2 down in front and multiply it by the 7. So you get 14x. And then derivative of 8 is 0, which is a constant, so you don't need to write plus 0 or minus 0. Now it's your turn. Find the derivatives of the following three functions. You're going to need to rewrite these using some algebra techniques, at least in numbers 2 and 3 you will. The first one you should be able to do using just the power rule. 